The Sishin Saldana Railway. It cuts off most of the Cape Vescus from the sea. It's a symbol of the previous government's insider trading and corruption. But, as Pixel the Foxy would say, at least it works. Unlike some of our roads and our bridges. After the floods in 2008, Against advice of civil engineers, civil society and disaster management, in 2013 an Eastern Cape company was contracted to replace the bridge over the Falurin River at Elance Bay. To do so, they had to dam up the river for nearly two years, and there were problems finding a solid foundation to build on. So, they made a plan, and we ended up with a 150 metre causeway essentially a gap in a dam wall. We were told it was for tourism. In fact, it was built for something completely different. It took a while for the reality to dawn on us. In the meantime, it made for great sailing. is a thing that gently passes Living with the wind Holding hands with the river's daughter Growing oh so wild then Learning things I shouldn't ought to know Chasing sun the sand up between my ten toes, walking tall in the rain, feeling the drops sliding down my backbone, oh to be a child then, a child in snow. But times were changing, and what was happening upstream in the catchments was changing too. Big agribusiness had moved in and was rapidly damming up and pumping up most of the water that used to flow into the Falern Flay. Irrigation of orchards and vineyards, fruit for export to Europe, America and China, some might call progress. We knew it was river capture. In the early 2000s, farmers here still grew crops according to the seasons, but no longer. Instead, the Falern Flay catchments had become a home for what can only be called industrial farming. By the time we realised what was happening, 
the Falurn Flay was disappearing. From a vibrant wetland supporting abundant life, slowly but surely, the Flay began to die. The birds disappeared, mud turned to dust, the wind blew, and soon there was only dust where water used to flow. As the years passed and the drought got worse, damming and pumping increased, and by the end of summer 2022, the main basin of Falurn Flay was rapidly becoming the poisonous acid puddles. We survived as best we could, with the help of an old windmill and a well, a small dugout dam, and a hundred meter borehole for drinking water. I had built a mini solar powered pond and river system in our garden and I planted trees around the settlement that were hand-watered or drip-fed from our windmill. Today, they are a joy. Nothing was wasted, not a drop of water. And because we became an oasis in a desert landscape, we always had plenty of visitors. This little fella had a damaged claw, and another visiting genet took refuge in our camphor tree and was dive-bombed by a crow. I've never been able to work out why. Felicity made friends with a tortoise and we called Bella. Little tortoise, little tortoise. Long Bella. Whoops, no, don't, don't, don't. You mustn't take big pieces. You mustn't do that. You know you struggle with big pieces, eh? Thank you. But what kept us sane in a distressing time were the antics of our two companions, Tinker Taylor the cat and Pixel the foxy lady, who came with us on walks. Pixel went everywhere with us. She ate the birds' food. She found revolting snacks in the landscape. But her favourite pastimes of all were sailing and fishing. Even in the freezing west coast water. Pixel had a game that she absolutely adored. Pixel, leave. Rat! Strong duck! Strong duck! Rat! Rat dog! Rat thing, yes! She got lost a couple of times due to fireworks or a thunderstorm, and one time we had to get her back through Facebook. But Tinker Taylor gave her a warm welcome home. Sadly, neither stayed long enough to grow old alongside their humans. With no cat and no dog to protect us, it wasn't long before some not-so-welcome visitors arrived at our tiny oasis to shed their skins, or for the rats, mice and birds' eggs they needed, like everybody else, to survive the drought. Some looked dangerous and were not. Some looked harmless and were deadly. So the home fires burned and my overseas family got married, visited, had families of their own. It seemed like a good time to see where they lived. So my daughter Pia and I packed our bags and we went off down under.
We surfed at Bondi Beach, travelled around and saw something of the country and the city. Yeah! We reconnected with a rapidly growing family. And made a whole lot of new friends. And then back home where it was more meetings and campaigns to save Fuller and Flo from utter destruction. We made some wonderful friends and allies. Survived another South African general election with damage only to our car and another viscous Christmas. It's ironic that in these difficult times when everything seemed to be going wrong, that at a ceremony hosted by Cape Nature, Felicity should be recognised for her work to save the Falern Flay. And where to next? How would our story end, if it ever ends?